Y'all, this is Khaled Nathan Aleem, the real estate boy, and welcome to, we're going to start this weekly um, series on what's happening in the Philadelphia market. Now, why do we care about the Philadelphia market? We care because that's where we live, that's where we work, that's where we play. What I find out a lot of times is um, we're just not hip or what's going on in the Philadelphia market. It's more than just buying and selling houses. There's people out there making a whole bunch of deals and we're just not in it because of lack of information. Now, on this hour that we spend together weekly, Tuesdays at three o'clock, um, I'm not an expert as far as maybe some of the things that are going on down in City Hall, but um, I am an expert in the, in the respects of being a realtor, being in the market, okay? Um, so we're going to break down some things, um, explain some things, and just just kind of converse as far as what's going on in the market. I do want this to be interactive. So um, if you do have questions, you do have comments, please let me know. And um, please jump in there, whether you're on a Facebook Live or you're on Instagram. Just jump in with your questions. If you have some questions that are off topic, that's fine too. Um, what I'm going to do is pull this this is going to be real interactive if you want okay so what we got going on in a Philadelphia market okay first we have apartments are planned for South Kensington okay um, it's actually a New York based real estate group um, they plan to do a hundred a uh, hundred units apartment complex um, they pay 3.8 million dollars um, for this Interesting fact about this property is that it was owned by um, Sean Schellinger. Um, that's the guy that got stabbed. Whatever happened as far as that incident that happened between him um, and the other young man who went to Morgan State. Whatever happened, happened. Um, it, the result out of that is that he died. Okay, um, Sean. So him and a partner, I guess, owned this piece of property in Kensington. Um According to the article, uh, they were actually going to use that space um, as apartments also. But what they were going to do is they were going to rent the ground floor or it was going to be rent free as far as the um, ground floor for a co-working space for nearby residents. OK, um, but of course, he died. So that didn't come to fruition. Um, there was also a uh, charter high school. Uh, I guess that was backed by the Philadelphia unions. They were looking at that space, but the school leaders abandoned those programs. So um, it's scheduled to be ready in two years. OK, so. All right. So what, what, what we have, we have this this space that has been there for a while. OK, we, we have this other these people or this group from New York who comes in and now they buy it and now they buy it. So who are they going to bring in? They'll probably bring in some New York people. <laughs> So, I don't know. Is this good for Philadelphia? I mean, again, there were a couple other Philadelphia groups that were looking at this place in South Kensington. Um, but for whatever reason, a New York-based real estate group came in. So how do y'all feel about that? How do y'all feel about a New York group coming in? And that seems to happen a lot uh, down here in West Philly uh, off of uh, the old West Philly High. A New York group came in and brought that up. So I don't know. Do y'all think that the real estate should really stay with Philadelphians? Or it's like, hey, whoever got the money, they got the money. I guess my question is where are the jobs going to go? Who's going to get those jobs? Is it going to be people from New York? Or is it going to be people from the community? Or is it going to be like it usually is? People from Jersey, and I'm not hating on Jersey, okay? But if you go down to a lot of those sites, um, work sites where the cranes are, they're doing big buildings, a lot of them cars have Jersey tags. Why do you think that during rush hour in the morning, there's a traffic jam on people coming in to Philadelphia, um, and then at 4 o'clock, there's a traffic jam, on, a traffic jam on people going out? So... I'm um, going over over the bridge to Jersey. Um, it's because a lot of them come in here, they get the money, and then they go home. It's just facts. It's, not, it's definitely not about feelings. It's definitely about facts. Okay. So um, 
moving on moving on um next we have is the mortgage industry roars to its best year ever courtesy of the fed uh lenders this year are projected to originate 4.1 trillion dollars of loans all right so what what does this mean okay lenders people who lend money for homes they've had record breaking year or they've had a record breaking year why because interest rates are so low that means money is super cheap super cheap that's why everybody and their mother has been refinancing including myself um just to give you a little bit about what i did this year um my home i had I bought this home maybe like three years ago. My interest rate was about 4.3 and I re refinanced it and now it's like at a 2.7. So it really makes sense if you have a, a, a loan or if you have a house and you have an interest rate of four or three, just talk with a mortgage lender. Talk with somebody and try to see, okay, does it make sense for me to refinance? Also, if you're look, if you're on the borderline as far as buying a home or not, this is the time. We don't know when mortgage rates are going to go up. Um, we got a new administration coming in here uh, in 2021. So who knows? He could give the Fed chair new direction or ask him because the Fed is supposed to operate outside of the government. But he he may ask him like, hey, um, you know, who knows the back room deals that these guys do? OK, but he could ask him or influence him in a way to maybe move the interest rate up. All right. So if you're looking to buy, now is the time. Money is super, super, super cheap. All right. Let's move on. Also, uh, we have Philly's eviction diversion program shows early success. So um, Philly has an eviction diversion program. What is that? It's something that launched in September. Um, it requires the landlords to go to mediation um, with tenants in most cases before filing eviction in court. Okay, so you have a landlord, you have a tenant, and the tenant's not paying for some reason. That's 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 happens. That's the issue 99% of the time. Okay, so the landlord's not paying, or the um, tenant's not paying, and now the landlord is like, okay, I'm going to evict you. Well, with this um eviction diversion program what they're looking to do is to do a mediation so the landlord and the um tenant come together and it's a third party unbiased third party and he listens to both and they both agree okay whatever that guy says or that girl or guy says that's what we're going to do all right so um it re again it requires landlords to go to mediation with tenants in most cases before filing for eviction, city and federal bans on most evictions expire at the end of the month. So as you know, because of the COVID, um, there's a ban in Philadelphia from evictions and that expires at the end of the month. It's December. Um, so at the end of the year, um, the requirement that landlords use the diversion program ends at the end of the month also. So right now, because of the COVID, um, Philadelphia is requiring landlords to go. But so now where's that? So now, where's it at? Come bring it to me. That's my daughter. Um, how am I drinking from over there? Oh, I said put it right here. Okay, so um, again, the requirement that landlords use a diversion program also ends at the end of the year. City Council is expected to vote. Um, Thursday, which is in two days, on the extension through March 31st. So they're going to be voting. That's some bad coffee. My daughter makes some bad coffee. Um, city Council is going to be voting, and they're expected to vote on Thursday. They're, they're going to vote on whether to extend this um, to March 31st. So be on the lookout for that. Um, if you're a tenant or if you're a landlord, um, this is this is changing new. This is changing the landscape. So make sure that you're um, make sure that you're privy to it. Wait one second here. Want to make sure ain't nobody in here asking questions that I'm not answering. All right. 
So next what we have is we have uh, Philly is set to create a new tax construction, oh, excuse me, Philly is set to create a new construction tax and make changes to a big property tax. And that's a big win for the council president, Daryl Clark. All right. So there's been a big struggle in Philadelphia for a while with this tax abatement. OK, but a tax abatement, um, there's a 10 year tax abatement. What that means is that, for example, say you own one of these row houses down here and let's just say it's worth fifty thousand dollars. OK, so you buy it. And your taxes might be only $500 a year. All right, so you buy it and you fix it up and you deck it out. So you fix it up and deck it out. And then um, now it's worth $300,000. All right. So what that tax abatement does is it says that you're going to pay for 10 years. You're going to pay that $500 um, tax okay because usually if you improve on the uh, property if you took it for being fifty thousand to three hundred thousand when they do the tax assessment they'll assess it closer to that three hundred thousand maybe not at three hundred thousand um, but it will go up if that goes up your taxes go up so what they so what Philadelphia did in a measure um, to attract business is they said hey if you come here to Philadelphia where we have ton of blight properties if you come and you fix a property we're, we're gonna charge you the same tax for 10 years okay and if you ask me the program worked um, there's a lot of development we still have a lot of blighted properties in Philadelphia but I do feel as though um, that program has helped now that's on one side. The other side of the table are where do those tax dollars go to? Those are property taxes. A lot of property taxes go where? To schools. And everybody knows about Philadelphia school program um, or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. So, um, lost my up. Okay. So, on the other side of the table, you have. The school district and proponents of the school district or supporters of the school district saying, hey, that's our money and we're losing out because of this tax, um, this tax abatement. So I think it was last year what they did is for because you have residentially, you have commercial. OK, commercial is the uh, a commercial space where people um, like restaurants and businesses. OK. But commercial is anything that is over four units, all right? So if you have an apartment building that's over four units, that cons that's considered commercial also. So what they did last year is they cut the tax abatement for residential. So that's one to four, okay? That's one to four units, but they kept it for commercial. <laughs> They kept it for commercial, so it was almost like, okay, we're going to get the little guys, okay, but the big guys, y'all cool. So let's break down what happened here, okay? So new tax on residential construction, um, and they're going to make major changes to the property tax abatement program. It's a program that I just spoke about, okay? Um, this bill won approval from city council. Uh, late Tuesday, last Tuesday, not this Tuesday, last Tuesday night, uh, City Council President uh, Daryl Clark proposed using the revenue from the new construction tax and future reductions in the real estate tax break to finance uh, $4 million in bonds for an ambitious anti-poverty and affordable housing plan he is calling the Neighborhood Preservation Initiative. Maybe what I'll do is next week we'll go over we'll maybe look at that that neighborhood preservation initiative see what it is go with the ins and outs and see if there's something good for the city or something that's uh not good for the city all right so for city homeowners this new tax proposal excuse me it can mean a new tax equal to one percent of the value of new construction or any major extensions they make to their homes okay so if you own a home 
what they're saying is they're proposing a 1% tax. Um, that's on top of the taxes that you already get. Um, for anything that's new construction, now there's not a whole lot of new construction going on um, in the city because it's an old city. There's, there's not a ton of room in Philadelphia for new construction. There's some, but not a whole lot. Um, or major extensions they make to their homes. Now, major is a very broad word. Okay, so I would really like to know what do they mean by major extension? Like, okay, if my house is a thousand square feet, um, if I add a, a bump out in the back, you guys know what a bump out is, you know, that storage room in the back. If I add a bump out, is that going to cause me to kick in this 1% rule? So I'm sure there's a lot of language that needs to happen um, for this for this to be clear. And this is why we have to dig into what these politicians are saying. We have to dig into because sometimes they'll use a uh, broad language knowing that people will dig into, oh, okay, what does this really mean? Okay, so that's for city homeowners. Again, there could be a 1% tax to the value of new construction or any major extensions. Um, for commercial property owners, and again, when I say commercial property owners, we're talking anything that's not for and below units so a single family unit uh duplex triplex quadplex all that is residential when you go above that is when you're talking about um commercial properties all right so for commercial property owners it would mean a 10 percent reduction in the value of the 10-year real estate tax break program so that's like the tax abatement program that i just spoke about they're saying um there will be a 10 percent reduction in that okay um now with this bill the mayor and the unions of course they fear and that's who's mostly the people who are on this side like i said is the mayor he's backed by um unions and these unions when the the city is prospering as far as work for contractors okay or union workers so they fear that okay if you take this tax abatement away then that's going to cause economic that's going to slow economic growth in philly so you got two sides of the table here okay you got one side that's saying hey listen keep the tax abatement because we eat it right now Okay, so the tax, uh, hold on. You have people in real estate, um, you have people in business just in general, they love the tax abatement because it's bringing people here, it's incentivizing people to come to Philadelphia. But as I learned in my economics class, my economics professor used to always say, there's no free lunch. Okay, so that money is being pulled from somewhere. Somebody is suffering because of that money. Okay, um, and that and that's the school program, the property taxes. the The city is missing that money. So since the city is missing that money, um, some things fall by the wayside, and some people feel like, including, um, including some of the people in the schools, feel like what's being sacrificed is our ch children's education. OK, because that money that that person would pay in our example where the guy uh, uh, purchased or where you purchased a house for fifty thousand dollars and now it's worth three hundred thousand dollars. That taxes, that increase in taxes would have went primarily to the schools and to other places, but would have went primarily to the schools. So the schools are feeling like they're um, missing out. OK. So the mayor and unions, they fear economic slow growth, okay? So they were against this bill, but they jumped on board when uh, Clark exempt commercial properties from the construction tax and delay the implementation of reductions in the tax abatement, according to, um, and this is according to um, the inquirer, but a city hall source with knowledge of the deal, okay? so. Final vote on this is December 10th, um, and it could take effect the beginning of uh, 2022. So it seems a lot of times with these bills, 
they're kicked down the road, kicked down the road. And again, I'm not a politician, okay? So don't don't come at me for um, if I get something wrong dealing with politics. <laughs> but it seems like they kicked this down the road, um, so this won't take effect in until January 2022, okay? Um, this looks like a huge money generator, all right? So when they did the economics or the numbers behind this okay as far as this new tax bill it it's great it looks awesome if the economy doesn't slow down okay so because this tax money is coming from people buying and selling homes buying and selling homes so if they keep at the current level that it is then this looks awesome. Like the, the city's going to make a lot of money from this new tax program. Uh, but if it slows down, like some of the builders think that it's going to slow down, then it might not be as much. Okay. Um, there were four councilmen who were against this bill. Um, the Republicans were Brian O'Neill and David O. Uh, if you don't know who David O is, David O was the one who brought the bill as far as to speed up the um, eviction process and to, to get squatters out easily uh, or, or in a better way or faster. This is where I was looking for faster. Okay. So that's who sponsored that bill, David O. So um, that, that was awesome. That bill was awesome. Okay. Um, and also the other two was um, Derek Green, these are Democrats, Derek Green and Alan Down. Alan Dom is, uh, he's a realtor also, okay? So he was against the bill. I would, I would love to hear why he's against the bill. Not passing judgment either way, but just speaking from a, a realtor, they, they call him the, uh, the condo king or the condo something. I, I want to say condo king, but it may be condo something else. Um, but I would love to hear as far as his reasons for, I'm going against this bill. Uh, let's see. Right. And as I already spoke last year, um, the city council, they cut the value um, of the residential tax abatement by roughly half while leaving the abatement for commercial properties untouched. And those changes were to take effect at the end of 2020. So what that means is that um, that tax abatement that I was telling y'all about, they cut it in half for residential, but they kind of left it, they left it untouched as far as um, commercial properties, all right? All right, y'all, I'm gonna get out of here, give y'all my half an hour. So again, we're gonna do this every Tuesday um, at three o'clock. And again, if you guys have questions on anything, please let me know, but it's gonna be everything Philly, um, everything Philly real estate, we really have to, I know back in the day, people, well, this is my block, this is my street. Well, it's it's time for us to really claim our blocks. It's time for us to really claim our streets and know the decisions that are being made for us. Because a lot of times it's not by us. All right, so we really have to be informed as far as what's going on down at City Hall. What plans do they have for your neighborhood? Um, do they plan on building a school in your neighborhood? Do they plan on building apartments in your neighborhood? These are things that you want to know about. Because others know about it and they profit on it. Because it's about information. If you don't have the information, how are you going to make moves? i say it again. If you don't have information, how are you going to make moves? All right? So... For y'all who don't read, <laughs> tune in. And again, it's 3 o'clock, uh, and that's Eastern time. We'll do this 3 o'clock as long as I'm alive uh, on Tuesdays. And um, if there's no newsworthy subjects, um, then I'll just go into some real estate something, okay? All right, y'all. This is the Real Estate Board, Khalid Nathan Alim. I'll see you when I see you.